Hey y'all, welcome to the Clock Tower. I'm Colton here with Brandon. Five cards, five minutes. We're talking about rares and double rares from Seven Deadly Sins 2 that we have seen so far. Brandon, what's our first card? First up, we have Escanor, Arrogant and Powerful. On play, heal. On attack, if you have the choice in your climax zone and you have four or more other characters, you can pay one and then pitch a specific character, Escanor, Master of the Tavern. So when you do, when this card deals attack damage, it deals it in instances of one uh, rather than trying to do the whole swing at once. So... You could potentially stick more damage, especially if they have a lot of cancels on the top of their deck. You have to have four or less soul when you're doing this, otherwise that doesn't work. It sits at three soul by itself with a climax. If you trigger, that puts it up to four. Yeah, this can close in a well-compressed deck even. This will be hard to try field because you have to ditch the specific zero that we're going to talk about in a second. This isn't incredible, but it is very consistent. Doesn't have insane closing power, but still will be a very consistent closing top end. Next, the zero in question, Escanor Master of the Tavern. This is the Onion Ricky, but it doesn't have the power condition that the version in Hollow Live has. Still a really useful effect. This is slightly better than the one that already exists in SDS, and because it works with the Escanor top end, this will probably see play probably both in and out of the Escanor deck. Yeah, I think having this profile is going to be really helpful. Potential plus two, definitely useful in just about every list. So, yeah, 100%. And choosing what card you put in clock off of this effect can help fix for color as well. Next up, we have Elizabeth Strongheart. Uh, this is a 2-5 backup that when you use this, you can ditch a character from hand to give your Meliodas to the rescue in battle, neg two soul. It's a pay one, pitch one that bumps up your Meliodas to the rescues by additional two to the five power. Effectively, pay one, pitch two from hand to give your Meliodas to the rescues in battle already, also neg two soul. So it's a really interesting counter to be able to go alongside that. Um, it definitely makes that top end even more sluggish to get through. This has the potential to make the Meliodas top end extremely obnoxious. It doesn't deal with the combo's biggest weakness, which is that its back row is undefended. So if that can be bounced, you can still take away a lot of Meliodas's effectiveness. Still has a lot of things going on. Potentially really powerful, but it is going to cost a ton of hand to use this entire package. Next, Zeldris of the Ten Commandments, 3, 2, 9,000. If all of your other characters are Ten Commandments, this gets 2,000 power. On play, heal. On attack, pay one. If you do, five card Icy Tail. And until the end of your opponent's next turn, during this card's battle, you cannot receive damage from your opponent's auto effects. This is really interesting. Two good effects, anti-auto and five card Icy Tail, on a single card. The drawback for this is that you basically have to play this in the Ten Commandments package. That's it. You have to play Ten Commandments cards in order to use this package because it requires all of your characters to have the Ten Commandments trait in order to get its additional power. This is solid. This has the potential to be a really good top end for a competent villain's deck. An Icy Tail that can also try to force a two-turn endgame. This is at least interesting. Yeah, and I think that that's what makes it the most interesting, that it's an Icy Tail that tries to, with Anti-Burn, make it a two-turn endgame. Just really good, competent for a deck. Next up, we have the next 3-2, another Ten Commandments card. If you have two or more other Ten command characters, it gets 1,500 power and the ability... That when this card becomes reversed, you can ditch a card and bring this back to hand. In addition, it's also a stock healer. So ditch a card from hand when play and heal a top card to stock. Effectively replay a stock healer is actually really interesting. Yeah, I think the idea is that you play this with the Zeldris. This is part of that Ten Commandments package, right? So you try to deny damage with the Zeldris. You heal down to 3-0, deny damage with the Zeldris. And then you use this to heal back down to 3-0 and just try to keep it going. This tries to stave off losing as long as it takes to win the game with your Icy Tail combo, especially because it can keep popping back into hand. It costs only one to actually play it down. So it's a cheap healer that works with an anti-auto damage package. This Ten Commandments deck looks pretty competent. I don't know if it's going to be good, but it's at least got some interesting pieces, and I think when you put it all together, there is a playable deck here. And that's it. Thank you so much for joining us. We will be back on Tuesday with Weiss 102. More Five Cards, Five Minutes next week. We are not going to have our regular clock talk instead. Join us for the charity live stream starting on Wednesday, the 21st. Until next time, thank you so much for joining us. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and have a good one. We'll see you then.